Valley fam. Welcome back to another episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are down here in Hollywood, Florida in an area that I've never fished before. It's uh, about 8.30 a.m. So we're gonna get the kayak fully loaded and rigged, launch it and uh, do what we do and explore around and see if we can find ourselves a bite. So stay tuned, I'll see you guys on the water. We just launched and it's a little after 9 a.m. And uh, we're gonna head to the east uh, towards the intercoastal and uh, I think work north along a, a big mangrove stretch that I noticed on Google Maps. I'm gonna start off by tossing around a little fishaholic dark matter pulsar popper. Pretty cool little cut in the mangroves here. No fossil fuel vessels. So we can uh, venture up that way eventually if we want to. There's like a bunch of different cuts as we get further up. And uh, I think once we get up like a couple miles, there's a cut that goes all the way through these mangroves. And then there's like a salt pond uh, on the west side of all this vegetation. So we might venture up in there if we can't uh, get on any kind of activity out here on the intracoastal. I wanted to get down here for first light, but unfortunately uh, I was up late last night and uh, this was kind of like a last minute uh, adventure that was planned. So I'm just gonna make the most of it. We've got, wow, 82 degree water temps. That is really warm. Up in uh, Stewart, Palm City area, where I currently live, it's uh, been hovering around like 75, 77. Hmm, I'm gonna put the popper down for a little bit. There's uh, a nice bridge pretty far up that I can see. I'm gonna try trolling up that way with the four inch Fishaholic Finback Shad and uh, just see if we can cover some water along this structure. And uh, it's kinda deepish here. It's not too shallow. It's like five to seven feet. So I think that's plenty of water for us to troll this bait and see what happens. I like the look of this little cut right here. Definitely worth a cast inside there. Oh yeah. Ah, shoot. Almost snagged some rocks that are there. Oops, had a bite. Hmm. Something. Took a whack at the shed. Let's try that again. Oh, getting some more bites. Maybe just little snappers. Oh yeah, I'm getting whacked like crazy here. Oh. Hmm. I'm kind of curious to find out what these fish are that are giving me a bunch of bites. So I actually did uh, bring some bait with me today. 
I've got a bunch of these greenies that are thawing out. And uh, I caught them like maybe three, four weeks ago. And I'm just gonna take out a couple and cut a bunch of them into little pieces and toss them in there. And then I'll put some little pieces on a little hook and see if we can get bit. All right, that should be good to start. And I've got these really tiny little hooks in here like that little guy that'll be perfect all right let's chum the waters a little bit i'm gonna throw this little chunk on the hook and let's see what happens there he is All right, skunk is out of the kayak. Found ourselves a little mangrove snapper. Sweet. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that one. Let's, uh, Keep moving north and uh, maybe uh, find a different spot with uh, some bigger ones on it. All right, I just switched uh, to this Rapala on this uh, seven foot heavy action uh, dark matter spinning rod. And I'm gonna try casting this around as we uh, work further up the intracoastal. There's a fish, a little barracuda. Better than nothing. I was hoping for one like four times the size though, but maybe we'll find them. It took about another dozen casts and uh, I trolled down and back along the trees here and no other bites. So I'm gonna clip off the Rapala now and I want to try a shad along the bridge out there. I'm gonna try this uh, five inch fishaholic finback shad and uh, try working the deeper depths along the structure. And uh, I think there possibly could be, uh, you know, some big snook there. Uh, you know, I'm not really sure. I, I've never fished this bridge before, but it looks good. We fished all the way around with the shad and uh, no bites. So I'm gonna tie this up. And what I wanna do is uh, I'm thinking, you know, if we chunk the rest of these little greenies that we have, we could tie off and uh, really heavily chum this area next to the bridge and maybe we'll be able to uh, get some big snapper or whatever wants to eat uh, chunks of greenies. So let's uh, start chunking this up.
All right, well, I'm gonna start my chum here in about 13 feet of water next to the bridge. And uh, unfortunately, um, the guy that, you know, raises and lowers the bridge, he came out and said that I can't tie off here. So we'll uh, try fishing it without tying off. All right, that should be some good chum to get us started as that uh, slowly sinks down to the bottom. Uh, sorry for the noise, I really can't help it because of the bridge there with all the cars going over it. And uh, we got the same little hook on that we were using before, but uh, this time I added a little split shot to our 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. And I'm just gonna put on a little chunk like that. Fish on. Oh, what do we got here? A little pinfish. Hmm. Should we keep him for bait? It might be a good snook or tarpon bait or big jack bait. Uh, we'll throw him back. If uh, we end up catching a bunch more, then I'll probably keep a couple in the live well. Oh, there's another one. Or right, well, another, this is a snapper. A little bit bigger than uh, the two we caught before probably. Oh, there's a good bite. <laughs> Felt bigger than what it actually is. <laughs> I tell you, these little snappers can hit hard. Oh, another one. As soon as it hit the bottom. Oh, look at this. I believe this is uh, a little yellowtail snapper. Correct me if I'm wrong. Look how beautiful that fish is, wow. I've never caught one of these. It's pretty sweet. Oh, there's a good bite. Ah, it's small again though. Oh, a little grunt. Uh, so another different species for today. This one is gorgeous. Look at all that blue on his face. I imagine that there's got to be at least like a 10 to 12 inch mangrove snapper here. Just probably got to get through the little stuff until we get to something bigger. Oh, there's a good bite. There we go. Fish on. Oh, uh, th th this I believe is a... Uh, Small lane snapper, correct me if I'm wrong. This one had me in some structure because I had to pull him out of something. Really gorgeous, oh, there he goes. So the tide just started going out and uh, that's why I kind of came back towards this end of the structure because I think uh, a lot of the chum that I was throwing in over there was drifting this way. So there's probably more fish piled up on this end if they're eating that bait that I was uh, throwing in his chum. All right, that one crushed it on the drop. Oh, another little yellowtail snapper. The first one we caught ate it on the drop too. So uh, we only got probably like 20 or 30 more little pieces of bait in the bag because I used most of the bait to uh, chum up the area to get these fish feeding. So we'll probably just kill the rest of this bait and then we'll switch it up and try something else. Oh, that feels a lot better. Hey, look at that, a little grouper. Ah, <laughs> oh, sweet. 
We're catching an awesome variety. Pretty sweet. All right, well, we are out of bait now and uh, we're leaving that bridge back there behind. Uh, we had like five or six more little snappers after the uh, grouper and uh, I was kind of happy with that little bite we got on. It was a good variety. Uh, unfortunately, nothing was really big. I was hoping we would get like maybe one or two keeper snapper or uh, you know, maybe uh, like some bigger grunts or something at least, but hey, it's fishing. So uh, at least we were, you know, we were able to drop down and catch something. But uh, now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna fish our way to the north uh, a little bit further, probably like another mile or two. And uh, there's another bridge coming up and right where that bridge is, there's a cut that cuts through the mangrove stretch here back to uh, the salt pond and then that like the entire salt pond back there will lead us back to the ramp in like a different uh, direction so uh, we're probably just gonna fish the intracoastal all the way to that cut and then fish through the cut fish through the entire salt pond and then we'll end up back at the ramp so uh, it's a little after 12 now that'll probably take at least two or three hours so we'll probably pack things up uh, around like two or 3 p.m. or so but hopefully we can get like one or two nice fish before uh, calling it a day so let's keep at it all right I'm gonna go back to throwing around the Rapala and uh, see if we can get lucky maybe find a bigger Cuda or uh, a nice snook or jack that'll be willing to eat this All right, well, we just fished uh, probably about 40 minutes along uh, the main intracoastal further uh, north. And now finally we are here at this cut that goes to the salt pond. Now what's pretty cool about this area now that we're off the main intracoastal is that uh, there aren't any combustion engines or motorized engines allowed in this area. So uh, it's gonna be much more secluded. And uh, maybe because of that, there'll be some more bigger fish hanging out. Well, we just fished all the way through the cut and uh, not a single bite, didn't see a single fish. And uh, it was a, there was a lot of current in there which made it challenging to fish and we got more of a workout <laughs> going through there than uh, anything else. But uh, now we're finally on the salt pond. We're gonna start working south and uh, just working along the mangroves, kind of do the same thing. And uh, yeah, I don't know, just see if we can find something up in here. All right, so inside the salt pond here, I wanna try tossing around one of these little Three inch Z Man swim baits. Hopefully, there'll be just some snook in here that we can get to nail this little bait. Oh, we just got hit right there. followed by a really big fish. Not sure what it was. There's a fish. A little bit bigger snapper. I believe this is a schoolmaster snapper and they just have to be 10 inches to keep. He's just a little shy of 10 inches. He's like an eighth inch short. So I guess I'll just throw him back. All right, well, unfortunately, we just fished our heart out for the last hour through the rest of the salt pond. And uh, now we're back at the ramp. 
and uh, no other fish after that last snapper. And all in all, today uh, was not a great day, but it was a very interesting day catching a, a variety of different species. And I also did learn of an area where we could possibly catch some tarpon next time because I saw a couple guys uh, hooking into like some 40, 50 inchers on the main intracoastal, kind of in the same area like where we made the cut through to uh, the salt pond. And uh, I wanted to get a, a closer look, but I just kind of stayed back from a distance and observed and they were using dead bait and they were uh, hooking into these fish. They weren't catching them. They had like three on in like 15 minutes and they all jumped off. But uh, I wanted to go over and look, but it, the boat traffic was just horrendous because it was around like 12, 1 p.m. And uh, today is uh, actually Easter Sunday. So it's crazy out there on the main intracoastal. So it was probably a good idea to fish, fish the uh, salt pond where uh, motorized vessels weren't allowed today. And for next time, if I come back, I will try the main intracoastal a little bit more and I'll probably get out here earlier and probably fish uh, during the week. So the boat traffic will be a lot more minimal. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for more. And until the next video, live to fish, fish to live.